Hello everyone, this is Dr. Wallace. No matter what course I am teaching, one common requirement continues to emerge, the need to utilize scholarly resources. Regardless of whether we are making supporting points in a research paper, essay question response, or discussion forum post, a general expectation exists within the academic world that we utilize scholarly resources. However, I have also found that many students do not understand what constitutes a scholarly resource. I want to take a few minutes to discuss what constitutes a scholarly resource and the best ways to locate these types of resources. Hopefully, when you have finished viewing this lesson, you will be equipped to separate the reliable resources from the unreliable. I think the best way to begin this topic is by establishing a working definition of the term scholarly resource. Prior to writing this lesson, I took a few moments to search through the textbooks on my shelf that deal with research and could not locate a single one that provided a clear definition of what constitutes a scholarly resource. Needless to say, I was a bit shocked given the number of books I have on this subject, and trust me when I say I have several. However, at the same time, it may indicate that developing a concise definition of the term scholarly resource is challenging. Therefore, let's work together to build our own definition by first identifying the characteristics of a scholarly resource. First, a scholarly resource has typically been through some type of peer review process. A peer review process is one where knowledgeable individuals on the subject being discussed have reviewed the resource to validate the accuracy of the information being presented. Peer review is a standard requirement for articles published in academic journals and textbooks. Second, a scholarly resource that is reporting the findings of a research study will have abided by academic guidelines for conducting research. These resources will openly disclose the methods used to conduct the research and analyze the study findings. Third, Scholarly resources are based upon factual information. Any conjecture or assumptions are clearly disclosed as such, and the use of these is very limited. Fourth, as a means of demonstrating that factual information was used, a scholarly resource will typically cite other credible resources from which information was taken to support points being made. Fifth, scholarly resources are typically written in a neutral and unbiased voice. If you observe a lot of opinionated language in the resource, then it is most likely not considered scholarly in nature. Finally, the resource is published by a reputable source such as an academic journal, recognized textbook publisher, or a government agency. With those characteristics established, let's now craft our own definition of a scholarly resource. A scholarly resource is a peer-reviewed and or research-based source that utilizes factual information from other credible resources. It presents information in a neutral, unbiased voice and is made available by a reputable source. Now that we have a working definition of a scholarly resource, how should we go about locating these types of resources? The answer to that question lies within the definition we have just created. We want to focus our search on reputable sources. If we limit our search to reputable sources, we will automatically increase the chances of the information we locate being scholarly in nature. You're probably asking yourself at this point, what are examples of reliable sources? Let's take a moment and look at sources you can typically trust to provide scholarly information. We have already discussed a couple of reliable sources peer-reviewed journals and textbooks. The information in these sources has typically been reviewed by knowledgeable experts prior to publication. I also like to include professional and trade publications in this group. However, you need to do a little investigation on your own to determine the level of peer review that is conducted on articles prior to publication in these sources. Another example of a reliable source is a government website. The majority of information on these websites has been checked prior to publication. If the website address ends with .gov, then you know you're reviewing a government website. Educational websites that end in .edu are also typically very reliable sources of information. A final reliable source is a credible news agency. 
This type of source can be a bit tricky at times as it is often hard to determine what constitutes a credible news agency. Some news agencies are biased towards liberal or conservative agendas and as a result may provide partisan information. My best advice to you here is to use information from these sites with care and never rely solely upon them. Now let's take a moment to identify some unreliable sources. The first one that you will often see listed on the unacceptable list is Wikipedia. I'll be the first to admit that when I need to find out something fast, I will look at Wikipedia. However, I never, repeat never, use Wikipedia as a scholarly resource. Anyone can put any type of information on Wikipedia without the review of a knowledgeable expert to confirm its validity. The lack of some type of accepted peer review places Wikipedia in our unreliable category. Blogs are another unreliable source of information. As with Wikipedia, the information posted here does not undergo any sort of peer review and often amounts to little more than personal opinion. On a similar note, opinion websites should be avoided. Sometimes opinion websites will try to present themselves as scholarly in nature when they in fact are not. My best advice to you is that if the website address does not end in .gov or .edu, you should avoid using the information presented or at least do not present the information as scholarly in nature. The final unreliable source hopefully goes without mentioning. Tabloids. Tabloids are known to exaggerate the truth which is something that a scholarly resource attempts to avoid at all cost. Here is the most important thing to remember to ask yourself about any source you are using to obtain information. Has a knowledgeable expert reviewed the information available from this resource? If the answer is yes, then the source is good to use. However, if the answer is no, then you should avoid the source or at least use it with care. Note how I said, use it with care. There are a few exceptions when it might be appropriate to use information from a source that is normally considered unreliable. For example, if you want to highlight some existing misconceptions on a topic, you might cite information from unreliable sources, being careful to note this is what you're doing. Another similar example would be to demonstrate the existence of erroneous information. To successfully accomplish this, you might consider incorporating specific examples from these types of sources. A final example I will offer would be a situation where you are writing a research paper or conducting a research study on the topic of unreliable sources of information. To successfully discuss this type of topic, you would need to incorporate information from these types of sources. If you ever find yourself in one of these situations, you want to always remember that you still need to use information from reliable sources to refute the information presented in the unreliable sources. Never rely solely upon information from unreliable and or non-scholarly sources. I want to conclude this lesson by providing some quick tips as a summary of what we covered to assist you in determining whether a resource is scholarly in nature. First, I recommend beginning by using a search method that will limit your results to scholarly resources. For example, if you have access to an online university library, this is a great place to begin. The information you find through the university library will usually be from a scholarly source. Another great search tool is Google Scholar. Second, know the source of the information. Reliable sources of information will put you on a path towards scholarly resources. Finally, remember to ask yourself the following question. Has a knowledgeable expert reviewed the information available from the resource? If the answer is yes, then you are on the right path. However, if the answer is no, you should proceed with caution or avoid the source altogether. Thank you for taking the time to view this lesson. I hope the information that I presented assists you in identifying scholarly resources in the future.